Are they waiting on us? I guess so. <laughs> All right. Okay. <laughs> so, um, you want that? Hi, everyone. Welcome to Word on Wednesdays with Bellevue's Youth Group. So we were talking just a minute ago and trying to figure out some different uh, fun things you can do when you're six feet apart. And so what we'd like for you to do this week is come up with some ideas and maybe send a picture or post a picture online of different things you may be able to do with your family that are six feet apart. A few ideas we had were an Air 5 or really a, a selfie. All right, that's good. All right, so if you would, figure out a few things to do that, that you can be six feet apart and post some pictures on Facebook or something. That sounds fun. Right now, we're going to ask you guys to join in and worship with us. We're going to sing about the Lion and the Lamb. Jesus is the Lion of Judah. He is the promised one, the cornerstone. And he is also the Lamb of God who gave his life for us. So as we worship him, we worship him as our sovereign God, the powerful Lion, and also the one who humbled himself and allowed himself to be sacrificed for our sins. But he took his life back, rose from the grave, and ascended, and sits at the side of the Father, making atonement for us. So we are excited to be able to worship with you guys. We hope you do get up, sing, uh, take some pictures of you guys singing, uh, whatever you, you want to do, just kind of create some community. We want to make sure that we're all connected as we do worship the Lord. <laughs> He's roaring with power and fighting our battles. 
This is such an incredible time in history, a time that people will talk about for decades to come, and a time that you're living through right now. And I want to promise you, just as Kyle's going to tell you in just a minute through his message, that there is purpose in this time. The reason we know that is that we have promises from God. One of those promises is found in the book of Matthew, chapter 18. It's where Jesus tells a story illustrating God's love for us. He tells a story like this. If a shepherd had 100 sheep, and if he counted them, and if one were missing, he would do everything he could to find that missing sheep. And he would bring that sheep back into the fold. That story illustrates how much God loves us and how much he values every single soul. And he desires for us all to be connected to him. He said that he is the good shepherd and his sheep know his voice. So let's reach out. Let's reach out and respond to his voice today. God is reckless in his love. Let's respond to it. I spoke a word you were singing over me. You have been so, so good to me. Before I took a breath, you breathed your life in me. You have been so, so kind to me. Oh, the overwhelming, never-ending, reckless love, God. Oh, it chases me down, fights till I'm found, leaves the 99. I couldn't earn it, I don't deserve it, till you give yourself away. Still your love fought for me. You have been so, so good to me. When I felt no worth, you made it all for me. You have been so, so good.
you. Lord, I pray for these students tonight that you would bless them and you would help them to experience and feel the Holy Spirit through your truth tonight, that the Spirit would reveal your truth to them and allow them to know that they are deeply cared for and that there are plans and there are purposes behind what they are experiencing. And may you embolden them, dear Lord, that you have chosen them for this special time and you are creating in them something unique that they will have for the rest of their lives that will bring you glory and that will also help them to know who they are in you. Dear Lord, we ask for you to do this for them. In your name we pray. Amen. Hey, guys. It is time once again for our Word on Wednesday message. Uh, I got a lot of good responses from you guys last week that uh, the message was encouraging and helpful, and you guys really enjoyed the worship, and so I hope that you guys will um, have the, the same uh, experiences this week. I hope you really enjoy them. Um, before I jump into the message, I do want to mention just a couple of quick announcements for you of some things that um, are going to be happening. We're going to try, uh, we did this this past week, and some of you were able to be part of it, some of you hopefully will see this message and decide you want to be a part of it. Uh, we're going to try each Sunday night at 524, uh, like we, uh, we have our 524s. We're going to try to do a, a, a FaceTime meetup, just kind of get together for 15, 20 minutes, 30 minutes maybe, and just kind of talk. Uh, you know, FaceTime is uh, an easy way for us to do that if you have an iPhone. Uh, if your parents have an iPhone and they'd be willing to let you use it, that would be fine too. Uh, we'll probably do more than one per night. Uh, so that we can get as many people in as possible. But if you want to be a part of that, I want to encourage you to uh, text me. Um, and uh, you know my number is 270-906-5870. Putting that out there for the whole world to hear. But uh, text me with your name, your first name and last name, so that I know for sure who you are. And uh, we will uh, we'll try to let you in on our FaceTime meetups on Sunday night. Again, that's at 524. Also, uh, I'm going to be getting in touch with you guys over the next uh, several weeks, however long this goes, just to see how you're doing, and I'll try to shoot you a text or give you a call or check with your parents. Some of you, I know, don't have cell phones, and so just want to make sure you're doing well. You know, I love you guys so much. I, I've said this a lot. I really, really miss you all. Uh, I, on Sunday morning when we were filming, I actually had to walk into the youth department just to uh, to feel like I was at least somewhere close to you guys. And uh, so this is really tough. It's tough on me. I know it's tough on you guys, too. Uh, some of y'all are already asking questions about uh, upcoming events that are scheduled for the youth group that, that may be affected by the coronavirus. We don't know much yet, okay? So uh, what I can tell you is that at least the rest of the activities for March um, and, uh, you know, some of the stuff potentially going into April, like our special events and hangouts and activities and stuff like that, those are going to be scrapped, but um, we're hoping some other things will still happen. We'll know better the next couple of weeks kind of what's going to happen, and I'll make sure to let you guys know that through this and also on Sunday mornings, which is the other thing I want to tell you. If you're watching this on Wednesday night, please don't forget, Sunday mornings we will have another video available to you on the Bellevue Students YouTube channel, and uh, you can access that video and watch that. That is intended to be your life group curriculum. So uh, I'm doing just short videos to walk you all through some exercises you can do to work through some of the foundations of the faith that we're continuing to talk about. This last week we talked about how to deal with sin and uh, coming up the next couple of weeks we're going to talk about our identity in Christ and uh, we'll also talk a little bit about how to share our faith and the weeks to come. So hope you'll check those out. Don't just uh, watch this video, check those things out too, but tell all your buddies about this. We hope we have lots of people watching this because um, a lot of your friends their churches may not have anything for their youth group right now, and so if they need a little bit of encouragement, let them check out what we're doing. That said, I, I want to, to talk to you today. We're actually going to be looking at a passage of Scripture over in Psalm 121. So if you have a Bible, I want to encourage you to grab it, and uh, you can pause the video if you need to, but go grab your Bible, bring it, and to open up to Psalm 121, we're going to be looking at a few verses there. Um, we're starting today with the, the idea that we, we're in a, kind of a tough spot. All right, I've talked with several of you all, especially our seniors, some of our senior girls have expressed some real frustrations and disappointments over the fact that most of the things they've been looking forward to this year 
are getting canceled. You know, you're probably uh, going to have a hard time with a prom. I'm not sure what graduation is going to look like. There's, there's all sorts of stuff that's having to change, and that stinks, especially with our group, because you guys love to hang out so much. You guys love to be around each other so much. So one of the hardest things you're dealing with is the fact that you're not together. And the issue is, and what we're really going to talk about today, is the fact that when we have a struggle, when we face a challenge of some sort, we all tend to respond in familiar ways. What I mean is, we form habits when we're young on how we deal with difficult times, how we deal with struggles, and a lot of times those habits stay with us all the way up into adulthood. You know, when things aren't going right, when we have a problem, we tend to try to do the same stuff. We have tendencies, all right? Our tendencies are to look at the problem and overanalyze it. We analyze our issues to death. Um, and then when we start looking for solutions, our tendencies are, are there as well. Like, we tend to look everywhere except for where we should. We look to our friends who maybe have gone through something similar. We, uh, we look to experiences that maybe we've had before, and we say, okay, it was this way before, so it's this way now. Um, we, we try to, uh, to get advice from our friends, from our family members. We, we do a lot of different stuff, but none of those things are really the best way to approach a problem. And I'll go ahead and tell you, based on our current situation, here's what's unique. There's not a generation of people on the earth right now who have been through anything similar to this. That's kind of crazy. That there's no one living who has gone through anything close to what we're going through. Now there may be a person or two here or there that, that dealt with uh, you know, an illness back in the early 1900s. But for the most part, nobody's gone through what we're going through. You guys are unique. You're going through a situation that nobody has experienced before. And so we can look at that and we can say, well, we're on our own. We just have to kind of figure this out. We've got to wing it and, and hope that things work out. But that's not exactly true either. See, we may not get the answers to how to make everything good, but we can know the answer to how we need to make everything honoring to God. We can go through struggles and still please God with how we handle it. We can go through struggles and still get help, as this verse of Scripture is going to tell us. So if you have your Bibles, look at Psalm 121. We're starting in verse 1, and I'm going to read just a, a section of this for you. It says, I lift up my eyes to the hills. From where does my help come? My help comes from the Lord who made heaven and earth. He will not let your foot be moved. He who keeps you will not slumber. Behold, he who keeps Israel will neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord is your keeper. The Lord is your shade on your right hand. The sun shall not strike you by day, nor the moon by night. The Lord will keep you from all evil. He will keep your life. The Lord will keep your going out and your coming in from this time forth and forevermore. How cool is that? That the Lord our God is our help when things are tough. When things are out of our control, when we don't know what to do, God does. And he wants to help. He wants to work in us and through us. Most importantly, what he wants is connection. He wants to be with us walking through the struggle. You know, God will let you go through some stuff. He's going to allow us to go through difficult times. There's no in scripture where it says he won't let you struggle from time to time. But he's faithful to stick with us when things get difficult to help us through. I love that, that it keeps saying the words, keep you, that God will keep you, God will keep you, he will keep you, God will keep you. In spite of the frustrations and the difficulties and the disappointments of what we're going through right now, God will keep you. He's going to take care of you guys. He's going to be right there to protect you and to provide for you and to help you through this. 
Don't lose sight of that. What we know this, this evening is that our help comes from the Lord. It doesn't come from any other places. We can look all around. We can try to, to hope that the government might fix stuff or, or that our schools will work things out and make things work for us or that our friends will, will make things easier in our life or that our parents can provide everything that we need. The truth is every area that we look at, there is potential for those things to fall or to fail. I mean, I even mentioned parents in there. We don't like to think about parents failing, but I can tell you honestly, guys, I fail as a parent all the time. I love my kids, but I mess stuff up constantly. But who doesn't mess up? God. And he's the one that will provide the help that we need regardless of anything else going on around us. He's the source of all good things, and he has complete authority over our lives and over this world. God has authority. He is in control. He's God. So the question becomes, when things get tough, why would we look anywhere else? It goes back to what we were talking about before. We've developed habits since we were kids that we continue all the way into adulthood. We've got to break those habits and start not looking around us, but looking straight up, looking to God and looking and seeing what it is he wants to do, and what it is he can do because he's God. So, what do we do? The simple answer here and the simple direction is this. Cling to Jesus. You know, uh, cling is a word we don't think much about. I'll, I'll tell you what I think of when I think of clinging. And there's a lot of really good illustrations, but I don't have those. If y'all know me, I don't do good illustrations. So, here's what I think of. Have any of you all ever gotten a shirt that your mom has washed and she's dried and you get the shirt and you put the shirt on and you like the shirt and you think, wow, this really smells fresh. For some reason, the shirt smells more fresh than it normally does. Fresher, not more. Anyway, you get it. So the shirt is like, like, mm, it just smells good. I don't know why. This is kind of cool. It's kind of weird. And then you get to school and you're like, you're, you just feel weird. You feel uncomfortable. And then you realize uh, that there's a dryer sheet stuck in the back of your shirt. Nobody else ever had that? Okay, me neither. But here's the thing, like that, that little dryer sheet, it clings to that shirt, right? Like it's in there. It, it, it doesn't fall out. It doesn't, you know, go anywhere else. It clings to it. It sticks to it. It hooks to it. Guys, that's what our relationship with Jesus should look like. We should cling to Christ like a dryer sheet just hanging on for dear life. We should be clinging to Jesus because the closer we get to him, when things get crazy, when things get nuts like they are right now, we're still right there with him. And he can handle it. It's like when you were a little kid and you got scared while you were crossing the street or you got scared during a storm or you got scared while you were watching a movie. You knew you could go to your mom or you could go to your dad and they would pick you up and they would hold you and they would squeeze you tight and you were fine. Guys, we need to cling to Jesus the same way we cling to parents when we're little, the same way a dryer sheet clings to a, a clean shirt. We need to cling to Christ, be as close to him as we possibly can. We need to settle for nothing less than Jesus. Don't settle for the help that everything else and everybody else is going to throw at you during a tough time. Settle only for Jesus Christ. Don't follow the trends. Don't follow the rumors that are all around. Know that Jesus is the truth and allow him to be the truth in your life. To put it simply, trust in God, guys. If you're hurting right now. We're all a little nervous. We're all a little concerned about what's coming next. We're nervous about how long this is going to take. There's nobody that's like loving this right now. So, my encouragement to you guys, coming from my heart here today, just trust God. He knows what he's doing. This is a season. We'll get through it. But the way we get through it in a good way is to hold tightly to Jesus 
knowing that God is where our help really comes from. Just grow in him and love him. I want to encourage you and challenge you, each of you. If you're not reading your Bible every day right now, what else do you have to do? Okay? Dig into the Word, guys. Read it. I've already gotten texts from a couple of you guys asking me questions about passages of Scripture. I love that. You all know I love that. That gets me excited when you all ask me questions, especially if it's something that I don't know, because then I need to look it up too. Now, there's rarely anything like that because I know so much, but occasionally there is. So be digging into the Word, guys. Read in the Bible. Spend time in prayer. Pray for each other. Pray for me. Pray for your church staff. I'll tell you who to pray for. Pray for the tech team at church. Right? Nobody thinks to pray for them. But if it wasn't for them, this video wouldn't be on. Most of what we're doing as a church wouldn't be happening without their work. So pray for them. Pray for them to stay safe. Pray for your life group leader. Call your life group leader. Give them a what's up. Guys, make this time about Jesus. Cling to him and watch what he does. It's going to be amazing. I love you guys so much. I miss you guys so much. I'm going to pray for us, and then we'll be done. God, thank you again for the group of students that are watching this video. Thank you for their desire to know you more and to um, follow you every day. I pray that those desires will grow stronger. I pray that in the midst of uh, uh, you know, separation that they can still be close. I pray that none of our students will feel left out, that they'll all feel like they're tapped into what's going on. And God, we do pray that this, uh, that this schedule change we've had to deal with will, will improve quickly. But most of all, God, we pray that you will be glorified through our lives and through our words and through our actions. Help each of us to cling to your son. God, thank you for how you love us. Thank you for how you care for us. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen.